back in town. I thought we told you boys this was SOT territory. Hey, how's it going, Miles here? Before we dive into the meat of the video, I just wanted to give you a little bit of context to what you're about to see. And it stems from a lot of videos that we're seeing on social media now where a lot of people who are shooting and training, they focus a lot on quick draws. And quick draws are great, there's a time and place for that, and absolutely they can matter in the right situation. But from what we're watching, it seems like a lot of people are really focused on it and don't really open their mind to other levels of training. You know, there should be a practical progression to it. And if we're talking about self-defense, the fast draw is important, but there's other things that are, some will argue, much, much more important than that. So this video is going to discuss the quick draw, but the main point is that when one trains, there should be levels and progression to your training. So that's a little bit of a context. Let's dive right into the video. Hi, Tosh here with Tactical Hive, and we're going to talk about quick draw theory. All right, so here's the situation. We've got the good guy. He's got concealed carry, appendix carry. We've got the bad guy, and he is gonna use his gun any way he damn wants. Actually, he's not. I'm gonna tell him what he's gonna do, okay? And Miles here is gonna do everything in his power to get his gun out and shoot, but he's got some rules. So he can't shoot his threat until he knows it's a threat, okay? Until he sees the gun, because we're gonna do Target ID, right? We're gonna make sure that this is actual threat. By law, that's what you gotta do, right? Okay. In almost every state, I believe, you have to be able to discuss and prove that your threat is a threat and you had no other option, okay? So you can't draw your pistol until you know he's a threat, okay? And we're not gonna get into, well, his body language and all that other stuff. Mm. We're just talking about the mechanics of quick draw versus a real threat, okay? okay? So the bad guy, he's gonna conceal the gun in any way he would normally do it or how he wants to do it. But we're gonna give the bad guy all the advantage because he doesn't have to follow rules. He's a criminal and he's a real threat. So all I want you to do is put your gun behind your back, okay, where he can't see it. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna pull the gun on him and shoot him at any time you want to. It's on you. You can't draw your gun until you see the threat, okay? Let's do it. More chance. All right, back up. Let's give him a little more chance, okay? Same deal. One thing I'd like to talk about is Miles Cold. He hasn't done any shooting today. He's just basically picked up his CCW, put it in his pants and carried on with his day, okay? We're doing this as it would be probably for 99% of the population that concealed carries, okay? We've given him the advantage of having the best lo tactical location to carry a firearm. So everybody knows that the, the panics carry is the fastest way to draw, okay? All right, same thing. On you, bad guy. All right, so Miles, let's talk about what happened. But first, let me talk about our TRP. Uh, our TRP has no experience with real firearms. Today was the first time he ever shot a real weapon system, or a real Glock, even though it's SIM. It's the first time he's ever done it. And yet, he was still able to outshoot our veteran shooter who is very fast, okay? Why is that? And we're gonna talk about what just happened. Okay, Miles, based on what happened, why do you think I gave him the advantage? Um, not so sure. Because he's a bad guy. <laughs> he has no rules. He doesn't give a shit about the law. Yeah. Okay, so he gets the advantage. You are a law-abiding citizen stuck to the rules that you have to follow. Yeah. Okay, and we just gave you the fastest possible way to draw a concealed carry. Uh -huh. All right. 
What were your thoughts on drawing your weapon system? It's uh, one is um, it's much slower because he has the jump on me. You know, the action is always going to be faster than reaction. And I have to take that time to, based on the rules given, I have to wait and identify the gun. And by the time that's already out and I'm drawn, it's just, I'm behind the eight ball. Okay. All right, so did you notice from the first draw, when you were much closer, you didn't even get to your pistol? Yeah. Okay? Absolutely. As you got farther away, when you had the luxury of distance and time, you were able to at least get your hand on your gun and get it out. Yeah. And I don't think you got it out before you got shot. No, yeah, I was shot. Okay. Yeah, so the first shot missed, uh, second shot got me in the shoulder, and that would have already ruined my draw anyway. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna go to expose carry, okay. and we're gonna try the same drill. Okay. Uh, just to see what what's, what's going on here, gotcha. and maybe break some mythos about you can train hard enough and fast enough to get good enough to handle a situation like this. And then we're gonna start changing it up a little bit. We're gonna give more things in your favor and less in his. Okay. But let's just go with the raw, this raw data right now. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. All right, so we changed it up a little bit. So we gave Miles a very fast holster, exposed carry or outside the waistband, if you will. And the same rules apply. And we're gonna do it close like this, okay? Most engagements are with inside this actually, but we're gonna go with this distance, just kind of demonstrate what's going on. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay. Same rules, Miles. Okay. You are not allowed to engage this guy until you see the threat. Okay? okay? Got it. It's on you. Let me get my mask on and get out of the way. All right, shooter, on you. Okay. Let's uh, let's spread it out a little bit. Let's get a little more time distance. All right, shooter on you. All right, Miles, a little ego in that one, right? All right, so you guys all saw the results, so we don't really need to discuss the results, except for, okay, he, he was able to get three shots off before you even cleared leather and then you still shot. Mm -hmm just because you wanted some payback. Yeah. Okay. Just because I had my muzzle up. <laughs> All right, so we have essentially probably the best quickest way to draw a firearm. Okay, so all the advantage to the bad guy, none of the advantage to you. Okay, and you're even a little bit warmed up because you did the other one, okay? So take it for what it is and let's go on from here. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna go back to Penix Carry, okay? And the difference is you're allowed to move, okay? You can move left, you can move right, but so can you, okay? But the same rules apply. You cannot draw and shoot your threat until you know he's a threat. And how do we know he has, he's a threat? Is because he'll have a gun in his hand and he's gonna be pointing it at you. So I'm giving you the luxury to move left, right, whatever, back, forward, I don't care. Okay, and we're gonna keep the distance a little bit farther apart, so. And you can do the same, left, right, forward, okay? All right, TRP, it's on you, let me get out of the way, and let's see what happens. All right, so this experiment, okay, I'm a big believer in moving. Mm -hmm. You know, if you got to go to guns to move, because moving target's harder. You still got shot, right? Yeah, still got shot. Okay. But, uh, especially at this distance. Right. And I, I didn't see, did you move a little bit? Yeah, I kind of. You moved with him, huh? Kind of started moving, I think. Okay. So even that, even those tactical advantages that you had, if you can call them advantages, didn't really help mm -hmm. all that much. You got shot where? First shot was right in the head. Okay. First shot was in the head, yep. So that kind of debunks that theory also mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. Not all the way. I mean, it's a little thing that may help you, mm -hmm. but we're talking about a guy with no experience shooting Absolutely. a firearm and he shot you in the damn head. Yep. Okay, so we just did an experiment on quick draw, right? And the theories behind quick draw, understanding that we took all of the advantage away from you, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, the old west scenario where two guys meet on the street and quick draw each other. Uh, when you look at that, that's that's consensual confrontation. Mm -hmm. Okay, you essentially you're both abiding by the same rules. 
but the problem is in real life, the threats don't abide by any damn rules, okay? And so that, I just wanted to bring that realism to it and I want you to think about the training that you've had in the past and, and what you were doing, mm -hmm. okay? And why are you doing it? And I'm not trying to poo-poo on training out there. All I would say, even if you learn shooting from an adequate teacher, as long as he's safe, it's still gonna give you a little bit of an advantage, mm -hmm. but just understand how, why you do what you do and how it applies to your personal defense. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what, what's your takeaway yeah, thought, on this? I thought the exercise and this is the whole topic of the video was very relevant. As uh, your viewers here, you might notice a lot of the posts that we have been um, putting up lately is really about the progression of training where everything, is, as Tosh mentioned, you gotta start off with the basics, foundational, marksmanship. But when it comes to real confrontations, shooting is such a small, small part and there's there's so much more. And so this just prove, helps prove a point that shooting, training shooting is, is, is great. Now you need to understand the different levels of training and actually seek that type of training for what you're doing. If you're a sport shooter, that's awesome. Do whatever is going to help you excel at the sport. If you are shooting for self-defense, then these are things that maybe it needs to be, you gotta really, really take it to heart because I know that the internet is powerful. There's a lot of people who will do a lot of quick draws and things like that, but um, that is that works in the mechanics and that's great, that will help you. But it as we- It looks cool as shit. Yeah, yeah, but as we highlighted here in the practical application, it's not really the case. And it worked out perfect because our role player today really has no experience. He, even before we started filming, this is not a joke, he asked Tosh how to operate the firearm. So it, it just goes to show, and in a lot of our classes too, we'll tell, we'll tell people that, you know, a six year old boy or, or girl can really do damage and kill us at those distances we were at, at. and it was e exactly what happened too. So I really appreciate the exercise, and I think it's gonna be very helpful for a lot of people to really shed some light on what it really is going to be like in real conflict, for, particularly for civilians. It gives you a taste, it's, it's not what it's really like. It's much more gritty and dirty. Mm -hmm in real life, okay? It's it's much more, the anxiety you may have felt while doing this. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's, is not, gonna, not gonna, be gonna be exponentially be like, yeah. higher, yeah. right? And so your finite motor skills are gonna decrease drastically, okay? Because you're gonna be in that fight or flight mode, okay? Yeah. When, oh, oh shit, I could potentially die. Or, oh shit, if I die, now my family's next. That even, escalates the anxiety that you're gonna have in the situation. Another reason why, you know, everyone, is, this is not just us, everyone says it, this is why you guys have to practice it. It's, uh, I think it was uh, Lieutenant Grossman who mentioned, uh, you're, you're not going to rise to the occasion, you're gonna fall to the level of your training and if you're not practicing. I am, again, I just wanna reiterate, I'm not telling you not to train them, I'm telling you just the opposite. I want you to train with your firearms. I just want you to have a realistic uh, view of, of your training. That's all I'm, I'm trying to show here. And there's certain things that you can't get over. You can never get fast enough, okay? You can train for years on end, you're never gonna be fast enough. So, which leads in probably to another video about how do we gain the advantage, and that's what we're talking about in a real world situation is if we have the luxury of changing the situation, that's what we wanna do. So if you liked the video or you didn't like the video, please leave a comment. Uh, we'd love to hear from you and have a good day.